Hello everyone out there on YouTube. This is the Eugene Tour YouTube channel. First thing I want to do is thanks everybody that subscribed so far. I'm trying to increase my subscription base, so please subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. It's free. Maybe I'll throw in a free kitten that just showed up on my back door. Anyway, I'm inside the house. I'm going to show you how to set up Tuner Pro uh, and data log with it. I'm doing it from my PC inside the house. I'm going to use the cable. I will not, of course, be able to hook to the car because I'm in the house, but we'll all go out there in the second part of this video and hook to the car and uh, give a better demonstration. The reason I'm doing it on the PC in here is just, uh, I don't know, just feels a lot better. Okay, first thing you want to do is create yourself a folder. I call mine data logging. After you, open, you set your folder up, create subfolders. You want one, two, B, ADX, a bin file, and XDF, and data logs. Then you want to go online and download your uh, files. You want to download an ADX file, a bin file, an XDF file. Now, when it comes to the bin file, you're actually better off if you're using, if you have a chip burner. Put your, uh, take your memcal out of your computer, put it in the chip burner, and record the, uh, the bin directly off of that and save it. If not, download it off the internet. There's a lot of them out there. Hopefully they're, uh, they're out there for your vehicle. There's, in this case, we're going to run the files for uh, Redneck Rubicon as a 92 Corvette. He said in his comment in the last, he has the... Uh, a laptop tuner pro cable and a burner and he doesn't have the slightest idea how to use it so we're gonna I already downloaded the files I put them in the appropriate ones here you can see there's a DX file for 92 they'll have different names I got a bin this in this case it's for a 92 vet with 259 gears automatic obviously XDF file and well I have data log there's nothing in because we haven't data logged yet after you download and install Tuner Pro, go ahead, open it up. Once it's up, go to File, Open Bin, select your bin. In this case, I'm looking for the one in the file I created on the desktop. So we're going to go there, Data Logging, Bin File. Click on that and open it up. Go to XDF, click on select XDF. Same thing, I'm going to go there. Go to data logging folder. Go to XDF, XDF, and your XDF is. Now, this is the important one for data logging. In fact, this is the only one you need for data logging. If that's all you're going to do, and send it off to a chip burner. Load definition, click on acquisition, load definition file. That will be the ADX file. I'll stare to that folder again. Data logging. ADX. There we go. We'll let that load. You'll see a little line there go back and forth. Now we want to go to Tools. Go to Preferences. You can go through all these, but really the only thing you really need is uh, Data Acquisition. It should look just like this is. Use Plugin, Tuner Pro Acquisition Interface. Emulator interface, you don't need to worry about that unless you're using an emulator. Okay, configure plugin. Okay, you will select the serial, standard serial and the COM that your USB port is at if you're using the USB cable or your COM that your Bluetooth device is at. In this case, I have a blue uh, ADL USB cable. I'm going to plug it in. It does not need to be hooked to the car in order for it to detect the cable. So I'm going to just plug it into my home PC. And I'm going to test for validation. Cable found and functional. Click OK. Click OK, OK. Once you get it set up, it saves all the data, or it should. Uh, next thing you want to do is open up a dash. Every dash will be different for the you know year and uh, make of your car. 
Okay, this dash is actually different from my 90. It also doesn't have the send command for the CCM on my 90. It just automatically does it, so I don't have to uh, click send. But once it's hooked to the car, I'll show you in my, uh, on my 90. And that's not going to be for a 92, but it's basically the same thing. The only thing different is after you connect, you're going to click send. But basically, you're just going to click on acquire data. Click that. I can click that now. Nothing's going to happen. It's it's not hooked to a car, so. But once that's clicked, come over here, click send. It. Now there's two modes here. I've never done a 92, so whoever's using it, you're just gonna have to play with it. And click send. I guess if one doesn't work, try the other. Once that's done, once it's connected, like there it's saying connecting. Once it out in the second part of this video, I'll show you. It'll say connected, and you'll see data going by here and so forth. And all you have to do is come here where it says begin recording. That will be a little red dot. You click on that and you start recording your data log. Of course, before you connect, you want to turn your ignition on. Like I said, second part of the video, I'll go out there with my netbook or my little notebook or whatever you want to call them and uh, give you a quick demonstration on that. One thing you do want to do is uh, Get used to the Tuner Pro. Play around. All this is configurable. Like here we have uh, Spark Advance, eh. uh, Knock Retard. You can change all these. All you have to do is say uh, Knock Retard. Right click on it. The value of gauge. Let's see. Let's do a BLM cell. Or no, uh, in the case of a 92, you have a right and a left BLM. Let's do the right. That would be the right. Yeah. Go around to Spark Advance, right click that, go to Values, and I'll go left BLM. Now you have your BLMs. If you don't know what BLMs, you've got a lot of reading to do. I'm going to provide as many links as I can to help people out. But you need to learn this stuff. You need to go online and learn it at, uh, if you're going to burn your own chips. If you're just going to uh, data log and send a file off to a chip burner, somebody that does this stuff for a living, uh, Basically, all you need is what I showed you. Just record the data, go for a drive, drive, try and drive under as many situations as you can, or whatever the uh, person that's burning, doing your tuning tells you to do. Record that data and send it off. We'll burn you a new chip. It may take, it'll probably take a lot more than one or two uh, trips to burn a chip. Okay, and the truth is, once you, if you burn them yourself, you'll never stop playing with it. You'll at least try different things. But like I said. Don't be afraid to go on here and try different things. There's a data dash like I'm showing you. There's actually different dashes. You can set them up. There's a starter dash, which has barely anything. Uh, basic dash. Depends. It'll vary, too, with your uh, ADX file or whatever you're using. You also have here, show data list view. There you go, data list. This will show just pretty much what it tells you right there. It'll vary, it will vary, too. Switches. Error codes, all that stuff. And then you go uh, show data history. This, if we should be getting the tuning, then you're going to want to learn all this. Here's another useful one. This right here. Here you can actually scroll through the data. Right now it's probably showing data from my 90, which actually doesn't work right with this ADX file, but that's what it's showing. And uh, I'll give you a quick playback of one of them. I'll go to my 90 files, open everything up, and show you what happens. But uh, that's the quick and dirty of it. Uh, don't be afraid to play with things. There's tables over here, all sorts of things. Biomarker efficiency. Open it up. I'll tell you right now, this doesn't look right. Like I said, you're better off downloading the bin file. This doesn't look right at all. Yeah, this is the first time I ever ran uh, this file. But to me, this bin file doesn't look right, so it's either corrupt or or something. Like I said, you're better off getting the bin file right off your uh, right off your chip. In fact, if I use an emulator, the only file that will work on it is the file right off my chip. So if I try any of the bin files that are off of the uh, off of the internet, they're all corrupted. So when it comes to bin files, use your bin file directly off your chip if you can do it. Okay, 
uh, on to the second part of the video where I connect to the 90, uh, my 90 Corvette. Uh, before I do that, yeah, let me show you, uh, I'll play back, I'll switch everything back over to a 90 Corvette, make things a little bit easier, okay, Let's see, go here, got a little my bin file, my XDF, of course I gotta go back through all those files, no biggie to me. Let's see, XDF, there it is, that one there, okay. and I'll just select that one for now. Okay, now like I said, here I'll play you back a data log for my 90s. See how the dash is different from that 92? I'm going to play you back. That's a data log I did. Right now I got it in fast forward, so it's going to play fast. And uh, go to a history, a BLM history file. Average, you can see where all these cells populate. Like I said, if you're going to get into tuning, you'll have to learn all this. You got a lot of reading to do. And uh, there's all that information. You can see it changing. Go here. And like I said, this is really nice because you can scroll through it. Everything is configurable. I'm going to stop it. If it'll let me stop. And that's pretty much it. Out to the car and we'll uh, hook her up. Okay, everybody, this is the second part of the video where I connect uh, Tuna Pro up and data log. Now, I'm not going to run the engine for this uh, because right now the car is up on jack stands. The torque converter is unbolted from the flex plate. Uh, if I had the trans completely out, or I already had it rebuilt and back in, which ain't going to happen for a while, anyone who's been following my channel knows this. Uh, I could just support the engine and run it without the uh, torque converter hooked up, I believe, and data log for you. I'm not going to be able to do that today because uh, it'll just make one heck of a racket without the uh, torque converter bolted to the flex plate. I will show you how to acquire data. It'll just show any engine data running. I can show you a sample of that later when uh, uh, later on if you'd like or. Uh, or I'll show you one of the samples if I didn't already show you one of the samples on the first part of the video that I'm going to do later inside the house on the computer. But basically, once this is all set up, like I showed you uh, before, or I'm going to show you before, uh, basically, in this case, hook up your ALD connector, whichever type you're using, the cable or the Bluetooth. Make sure Tuner Pro is configured for it. Turn your ignition key on. And all you have to do is click Acquire Data. And you come down here, you see DA Connecting. Now in the case of my 1990 Corvette, it's going to take a little bit because at first it has to send a signal to silence the CCM or body computer. And this could take it. And now we're connected. Okay. Hopefully you'll see everything. I'm going to step on the gas back and forth. You can see the gauges move. The TPS sensor. You'll see the voltage change. And if I want to data log, I'll come up here. Click on begin recording. Here, I'll go ahead and record that just for the heck of it. And uh, the only thing I'm going to be recording is my TPS and whatever's showing on here right now. But it gives you an idea. Uh, then when you're ready, you just click stop playback or stop current log session. There it goes. A little screen will pop up. It'll tell you, ask you to name the file. And uh, I'm just going to put this 
name this test one two three I'm going to steer it in the right direction, right file. I want to make sure it goes in a data log file. That's not where I want it. There we go, data log. Where are we at? Data logs. There we go. And save it. Okay. Now, the longer your data log, the longer it will take to save. It could go on for a few minutes saving. Uh, but, what you can do is, uh, once it's saved, it'll go here, and it says select log session. You, it'll, the last log session that you just recorded will be already there. So if you're, that's what you want to play back, all you got to do is say play current log session. And it should play back. See everything doing? That's doing everything I did before. Hope everyone sees that. And you can do other things like... Uh, all the other monitors and whatnot, and you can copy it to a USB device or copy the file and email it if you're having it sent out to be tuned. That's all you have to do. Okay, I hope everyone enjoyed the video. Have a happy YouTube day.